Welcome back to GEMS with Genesis Amaris Kemp. With me today is Daniel Mangena. His business is called Dream with Dan. And today we're talking about alchemy abundance. But before we jump into that, here's a bit about Dan. So Daniel Mangena is an international speaker, best-selling author, broadcaster, and coach. He is best known for his highly successful Micro to Millions program, being the author of Stepping Beyond Intention and his Do It With Dan and Beyond Success podcast. He is completely self-made and has spent decades perfecting his world-class coaching methodology. His mission statement, to spearhead an evolutionary uplift in universal consciousness by awakening people to the importance of their unique role and enabling them to manifest their dream life. And if that doesn't tell you a little bit more about Dan, well, here he is. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So Dan, mm -hmm. when with all the incredible things that you have going on, the number one question for me is, how do you find time to do mm -hmm. it all? By not trying to do all of it myself. <laughs> <laughs> so working smarter, not harder. Working smarter, not harder. Um, working in collaboration with others, allowing people to do what they're blessed and gifted to do and supporting them in being the best in doing so. And now, whenever you think about that and just definitely get offloading the tasks that aren't really conducive to you and just focusing on what really matters, how important is that whenever we think about abundance? Well, abundance, I feel, comes when we're in a place of flow. And flow is going to find, you're going to find it a lot more challenging to be in a place of flow if you're burnt out from trying to do too much or in a space of resistance because you're doing things that you don't want to do or that you can't do or you've been you know, riding the wave of ineffectiveness because you've been doing things that you're not that effective at. But when you're just staying in your flow by doing the things that you're called to do, that you're blessed to do, that you're gifted to do, and then actually you get the collaborative energy of other people at a high vibe because they're doing the same thing, as a whole, everybody gets filled up rather than getting drained and everything moves forward at a better pace. I love it. So if you really focus on what you have been called and blessed to do, then you're not going to hit the period of burnt out mm -hmm. and you're able to allow your cup to be full. And as you be, begin to build partnerships with other people who are operating in their own zone of genius, then you're all getting full and winning together. Yes, yes, yes. I always ask people, why are you trying to do it all? Right. Why are you trying to? I often hear people, I haven't got enough money to hire the right people. If I don't do it, it's not going to get done right. These are all lack based mental programs and you're not going to get fruits of abundance from seeds of lack. So I always invite people to look at the reason why you probably see it's lack and that's why you've not been getting abundance. OK, let's dive a little bit deeper there. So if they're seeing it as lack, what mm -hmm. should they do to combat that lack because they definitely have to reprogram their mm -hmm. mindset in order to shift their perspective and get a new vantage point mm -hmm, mm -hmm. don't try and combat it that's the first step because when you try and fight something you give it more energy you're giving it more life so there's this delicate balance that we you know we support people in, in finding between surrendering to what is and yet moving into what can be so you're not resigning by accepting you're not putting your head in the sand and pretending everything's okay you're finding that gentle place of okay this is where my challenges are this is where the lack is I accept that it's here now what do I do about it oh okay so build from where you are at yes. and not necessarily dig deeper because if you're digging deeper you're exerting energy in that space yes. okay that and, makes and, sense. And, and the thing is, the unconscious mind moves at 10,000 to 10 million times the speed of the conscious mind anyway. A lot of people are trying to use conscious processes to overwrite an unconscious program, but it just doesn't move fast enough. So then you get more resentment, you get more burnout, you get frustration, you get negative loops being reinforced by the negative result of you not actually changing. And then you don't end up doing the things that can actually work to move you forward. 
Mm, okay, that's very that's very profound. And if you think about where you are right now in your current state, and you and you pair that with Dream with Dan, mm-hmm. and you talk about abundance, what yeah. exactly does that look like? And let's dive a little bit deeper so mm-hmm. we can understand how Dream with Dan came about, mm-hmm. um, how you're work how you're working and walking out abundance, mm-hmm. and how you are helping other people reach their version of abundance okay so we just literally um came off the back of a, a workshop called alchemy of abundance this weekend in person that's why i was, I was like oh that we could use that one uh, and what we did is i took people through seven ideas um which if followed can become a roadmap to abundance coming to you alchemically in other words not you hustling for it but it unfolding naturally from who you are and the first thing is owning where you are <laughs> owning where you are right then we want to start taking responsibility for where we're at and what's going to come next. Then we can start getting clear on where we want to go. Then we can start to clear the path in terms of our emotions and energy and frequency around it. Then we're supported even more greatly in dealing with the mindset challenges. Then we can come up with an effective strategy. And the last and perhaps most important piece is this, honoring that you're human and having compassion for the fact that you're not going to be switched on all the time. You're not going to get it right every day. Some days you're going to be giving in to the little sneaky voice and sometimes you're just not going to have the energy to do anything and you're going to need to rest. So that, those are the seven steps that we take people through on that. Um, and it really does cover all of those bases and give people the opportunity to start really having that abundance coming in a natural way. Mm. And then I think whenever I heard you go through the seven steps, they're all very useful and there are things that we all know, but sometimes we don't want to practice what we know because it's mm. scary, right? Mm-hmm. So then instead of, you know, progressing, we end up regressing until, mm. you know, the going gets tough and then we're scrambling to mm. really find that sweet spot where we could mm. really grow. But if we would kind of take a step back and we look at the big picture and we say, okay, what is our holistic approach? Then I could see that a lot of us will achieve our end goal sooner than we think. Would you agree? A hundred percent, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. The thing is, is that when the way that we teach people to select goals with the work that we do as well, is it's not you cognitively cooking up a goal. It's actually feeding into heart, to your heart and seeing what God wants to express through you and falling into line with that. So there's a certain level of support that sits behind it too. So what you want, wants to be born into life also. So again, there's not hustling. You don't have to bully the sun to rise in the morning. The earth is going to spin and it's going to happen. So it's moving into that natural kind of flow with with, with what you want, which is always going to be abundant because abundance is the natural way that things happen in nature anyway. Oh, you're dropping so many gems. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's, And I really believe that this conversation happened at the right time because you said you just got out of a workshop that talked about the alchemy of abundance. Mm -hmm. And here we are talking about the alchemy of abundance. And some Mm -hmm. people who operate in the religious or spiritual realm, they would say, oh, it's a Kairos moment, which is Mm -hmm. a God appointed moment Mm -hmm. or it's divine intervention or connection. Mm -hmm. And would would you say that everything happens for a reason Mm -hmm. and it's in that reason that is tied to our purpose? Would you agree with that statement? I say everything happens because it happens and you can make a reason (laughs) around it. (laughs) Oh, wow. Say that again. Everything happens because it happens and you can wrap a reason around it. Okay. That's a different way of looking at it. So everything happens because it happens. happens. Yeah. Okay. So not putting the extra baggage onto it. No, because there's a pressure to that. I mean, when you look at um, one of my keynotes that I deliver is called the pointlessness of purpose. And what that does is it actually breaks people free from this obsession with purpose at the the workshop this weekend one of the attendees, a guy called Matt, was saying how much freer he was by not running around like a headless chicken looking for this all-powerful singular purpose, which had been holding him back. Now that he understands he can flow and the divine can express a purpose for him at any time without him needing to chase after it, he's still going to be purpose-driven, but he's not going to be driven bonkers finding that purpose. The divine just speaks it through him. Okay, so then... What is an exercise that you did at the start of your conference as an icebreaker, if any? Uh, we did a number of exercises over the course of the weekend, a lot of visualization practices some different intervention work. We also had one of my friends was there. We did like a tapping circle. Um, 
but um, I kind of go with the flow. Uh, and in this instance, we did a, a journal practice, just connecting them to what they wanted out of the experience. And that's how we started. Okay. And mm. journaling is so freeing and so uplifting because it's a way to get those thoughts out of your head onto paper or electronically. And then if you reverse engineer it, then you're able to reflect on what you wrote in that instance. And then you mm -hmm. could also track your growth process mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by journaling. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And I feel like um, if people do not know how to effectively journal, then one one tip around that, what would you advise them to do? Don't make such a big thing out of it. Okay, just you know, be I'm, free. I'm, just be free. And, and one of the things that you know I love to do is to make things simple. Mm -hmm. um, and rather than saying, oh, you know, what am I going to journal? Just give yourself a series of prompts. You know, it could just be, what's one thing that I've learned today? What's one thing that I've challenged that's challenged me today? What's one way that I've expanded? What are a few things that I'm grateful for today? What's one thing I'd like to have done differently? Um, what's one thing I love about today? Just start getting into the habit, a regular consistent habit of opening up, putting pen to paper and allowing your thoughts without being filtered to flow onto the paper. And then you'll, it'll expand from there. So then another, let's, um, I want to ask another question on top of that, um, Dan, because I've heard some people say it's best to journal in the morning before you do any, anything, mm -hmm. because you're really connected with your body and mm -hmm. your thoughts are clear from mm -hmm. any junk from social media or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I've also heard people say like journal in the evenings, because mm -hmm. then you're freeing yourself from the day and you're just putting everything on paper. And mm -hmm. for me, who's also a writer like you, I feel like I just journal throughout the day. Sometimes mm -hmm. I talk to my phone, like talk, mm -hmm. not in a crazy way, y'all, but like mm -hmm. I'll <laughs> talk it into an, um, a voice memo or mm -hmm. I'll just pull out the notes app on my phone and type it in there. And I mm -hmm. feel like when you're very present with your thoughts, the journaling will flow. But what mm -hmm. is your thoughts around that? Everyone's unique. And it's even been evidenced by the fact that your personal experience at any time during the day, one teacher probably picking from their own experiences the morning and one says the evening. I reject this idea of cookie cutter approaches to anything in life. We should look to where we find the most flow. So I invite the listeners to play with when do they feel that they get the most out of it? Track your emotional state. When are you most fulfilled? When do you get the biggest payoff? Maybe it's both morning and evening, which is what I did. I don't yeah. tell the day with it. Right. So it's 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 about getting to know yourself, knowing yourself enough to know what works for you, rather than being dependent on someone else feeding you their stuff, which may not work for you at all. Got it. So the cookie cutter method does not always work for everybody, mm -hmm. but then you have to find your own uniqueness and tap into that. And then once you find your own uniqueness, then you're able to beat your own drums and find your rhythm that flows with who you were created to be exactly. is and dan i want to um peek your brain on what exactly is micro to millions program <laughs> so when i was about 18 i um i read i got a book by a guy called stuart goldsmith called the midas method and uh, for those of you who don't know the story of Midas, Midas is a Greek myth, I think, Greek or Roman. He asked the gods for a gift and he wanted anything he touches to turn to gold. But of course, this was a ridiculous thing to ask for because then he couldn't eat anything because everything turned to gold. He turned his kids to gold when he kissed them, his wife to gold. So it's a, it's a thing about greed. But the, when people say you've got the Midas touch, anything you touch turns to gold. It's about being successful. So I studied this book, it supported me in, um, in creating success at a very early age. Uh, and the, the author of the book, Guy Coach, the I say good, Stuart Goldsmith, I actually used the publisher's information in the book and wrote him a letter. And he became my first mentor because we were pen pals. So we're like 18 years old. Anyway, uh, a year or so later, he, he did an experiment where he said, I want you all, and this is in the UK, by the way, uh, to find a penny on the floor. You have to find it on the floor. And then only using money that you find on the floor or doing something with the money that you found to go through this process of doubling. One penny to two, two pennies to three, uh, two, one penny to two, two to four, four to eight, blah, blah, blah. There's a few places where you can round down, but he has some very strict rules. But if you take one penny 
and double it 28 times, it takes you to just over 1.6 million. So every penny has the potential to be worth, you know, over a million pounds. So I was one of the people that actually went through this experiment and completed it. It's how I made my first million when I was 19 years old. Um, when I lost all of that and then went to create again, I didn't use this method specifically the second time, but the third time when I was looking to, to build myself up again, I got to about 120,000. I needed the money. I used it. Going to 2016 now, fast forward, um, I don't know, nine years or whatever to, to, to 2016, when I was in my consulting business and thinking about leaving that to come and do what I do now, I said, oh my goodness, I completely forgot about the double your way to a million method. I said, I can use that to, to go again. So I started and I got stuck at about 12,000 pounds, just over 12,000 pounds. I was stuck there for months and I didn't understand why was I stuck. Did some journaling on it, did some introspection and realized 19 year old me that was doing it was like a little lone wolf, go get it, hustle, hustle, hustle. 30 something year old me is kind of chill, more heart-centered, collaboration, more about energy, um, frequency of money. It's very different. So I was trying to basically pour old wine into new caskets and new wine into old caskets, and that isn't going to work. And that's why I got stuck. It's new wine in old caskets. So I went online and started to do some research looking for communities because before there were like these little online groups, people that were connecting and doing the different things like, hey, I'm on this step. Here are some ideas and blah, blah, blah. So I hopped on and I found that one of Stuart's business partners, a guy called Barry, had created a different version where he said, instead of starting from a penny, just start from 100 and then it's only 14 steps. So I said, oh, I'll try this. But again, I just got stuck. Nothing really happened. I said, why is this? Fast forward a year and a half and it hit me. Number one, I needed to be in community. Number two, I needed that community to be on the same vibe as me. Number three, these guys were all about hustle, 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 and some mindset, but mainly hustle. And I'm now talking about intentionality, about frequency, collaborative energy, and working smart, not hard. So Micro to Millions became a community that I started where we guide people going through the process of taking 100 and turning it into 1.6 million, covering the energy, the mindset, and different strategies and tactics you can use based on you, a little cutter approach to get to over a million. And we've got millionaires in the program. We've got people that got to hundreds of thousands, people who created financial freedom, and we support people at different levels. And it's, it's great fun. Wow. And that's insightful because as you were sharing, I could hear the growth because you said, I hit my first million, my first million at 19, then mm -hmm. you lost it all. Mm -hmm. Then you're, then fast forwarding life, you were trying to hit it again, you got mm -hmm. stuck. And then mm -hmm you took a step back and you're mm -hmm. like, okay, why am I stuck here? Then you just really started to analyze and stuff. And it was because you're a different person than you were at 19 mm -hmm. years old. Some mm -hmm. of your goals changed, the way mm -hmm. you see life changed and mm -hmm. et cetera. And then you didn't really find a program that meshes where you were at. So you created one. Exactly. And now you're helping other people do something similar and not necessarily giving them that cookie cutter play, but then giving something that works according to them and where they are and their lifestyle, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I'm just curious to know, how did you lose it all at 19? Like, what did you do? Like, I didn't have the right licenses. So the government took everything. Oh, sir. Oh, it was just that like yeah. that. Yeah. One day I had it. Then the, the, that afternoon, I didn't have it anymore. Oh, wow. What were your emotions like during that? At the first time, I was absolutely fine, Genesis. I was like, oh, okay. Remember, I was young. I hadn't been yeah. tested by life yet. Right? I was 20 years old at that time. And I was arrogant. I was like, I'm just going to do it again. So I went up and did it again. Within a year and a half, I was a millionaire again. Oh, wow. Yeah. What was it? And you're like, mm, YOLO. You only yeah. live once, right? Exactly. I'm just going to do it again. Yeah, that was it. And now where you are in this stage of your life, what yeah. are some of your goals or aspirations? Mm -hmm. More contribution now. Um, the work that I'm doing now is creating the freedom for me to be more involved in the sharing side of things. So more content, more speaking, um, working on the next book at the moment, um, doing more speaking, uh, I love podcasting, going out and hanging out with people, cool people like you and speaking to their audience and sharing these gifts and yeah really it's about that and then more contribution more time with family uh, I've got a 10 month old baby um yeah so that's what I'm really really kind of interested in now more than anything and having the freedom on to live life on my terms that's what it's about 
I like that. And congratulations. I had no idea that you had yeah. a little baby. Do you have a boy or a girl? He's a boy. I've got a six-year-old stepdaughter and then Ethan is 10 months. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. The best of both worlds, a boy yeah. and a girl. Boy and a girl, yeah. And I like how you said living life on your own terms, because it reminds me, I can't remember if it's Robert Kiyosaki or if it's another person where it says you have to stop trading your time for money. Yeah, Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah. And a lot of people are still trading their time for money. And, you know, I, I feel like one of those people sometimes because, and I'm just going to be transparent here because when you're fully in the entrepreneurship journey Mm -hmm. and you don't know where that next money is going to come from, then you start to get worried. And I feel like that is the a natural response and not necessarily the supernatural response. And then whenever you leave something familiar, like you leave mm-hmm. your corporate job or you know they pay you something, but at the end of the day, you have to remind yourself, you're never going to make as much money as that CEO. They're mm-hmm. never going to value you the way mm-hmm. that you value yourself and mm-hmm. see yourself work. So then you have to ask ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? And is it because I'm surrounding myself with people who are comfortable to be in the employee bucket, and they don't want to tap into the B bucket, the the business bucket, or they don't want to diversify their wealth and etc. And then that you begin to shift and change your your methodology. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Very Very true. And then I think it's also a product of how you were raised, especially like who, um, who were you born to? What did your parents um, do? And what are those generational bondages and ties that are associated to you? Especially sometimes when you are first generation American, you see things differently because you see what your parents went through. And when you start to t- um, tick and drum at your own beat, people look at you as if you're crazy, mm-hmm. when in actuality, they don't understand the vision that was placed inside of you, because mm-hmm. it was not placed inside of them. Exactly, exactly. And I just want to encourage the listeners that regardless of what those bonds and bondages are, and what those inabilities of others are to see your vision, if it's been put inside of you, um, then definitely the resources and opportunities to bring it to life have been provided, including being the one to break those generational um, curses, including the one to be the difference, the change maker for the generations to come forward, whether it's through your line or the line of others who are looking upon you. Beautiful adage. And it's not always going to be easy. I do want to add that Mm -hmm. because sometimes you are going to be tested and it's in that test where you're going through a refining process and you're being pruned. Certain things are going to be cut certain things are going to be stripped away. But then once those things are gone, then you start to move freer because you no longer have the weight down. And um, Dan, I want you to tell the listeners and the viewers one or two gems, and then we're going to close out with a fun game. (laughs) Um, Don't take life so seriously. None of us are getting out of it alive. And uh, what you want wants you to. Okay. Are you ready Mm -hmm. for the game? Let's do it. So this is called 10 Questions with Genesis, the mm-hmm. host with the most is, and I'm going to ask you questions. Don't think about them. Just flow with it. So okay. ready? One. Yeah. Favorite color? Don't have one. Okay. Dream car? Lamborghini. Oh, yes. I love mm-hmm. Lamborghinis. What type of Lamborghini? Uh, Hurricane, I think, is the most recent model. Okay. Color? Mm-hmm. Charcoal. Charcoal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite food three don't have one <laughs> dang it <laughs> I've, I've, got As- I've got asperger's so i don't have any favorite things like that okay let me dial back the questions then okay, <laughs> okay so no favorite, none of the color- favorite ones no, okay none, none of, of the favorite, favorite colors okay if you could go anywhere in the world where would it be and why i had the most mag- magical time on ko island in thailand so i'd love to go back there for a bit okay thailand and say that uh, say uh ko Co PP in Thailand. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Ooh. Super intelligence. Super intelligence. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's three because I took off the other two. Yeah. If you can meet anyone living or dead, who mm-hmm. would it be and why? Got to be New Testament Jesus just to see if he was as cool as everyone makes him out to be. New Testament Jesus? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
like that. I have never heard that one before. <laughs> what question okay this is going to crown us question five what question would you ask new uh, new testament jesus oh what question would i ask first i want to have a full-on conversation but one question i definitely want to ask was what's up with you and mary what's up with you and mary oh yeah. okay <laughs> I would ask, okay. Because <laughs> they're, 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 the people have been talking and I'd love to hear it from, from the Jesus's mouth. You know, like the people have been talking, what's up with you and Mary? <laughs> what age were you when you put out your first book? I was 33. 33? Mm -hmm. Okay. How old are you now? 37. 37? Okay, mm -hmm. amazing. So at 33, you put out your first book, and mm -hmm. now at 37, you're putting out your fourth one, right? Fifth. Fifth one. Fifth mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And you're a best-selling author. Yes. So you have some amazing things that happen within a span of four years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eight. Whew. Okay. Would you, if you could, wait, no, I don't want to ask that one. I got to go deeper. <laughs> Because I have to go deep with you, Dan. That's what I'm learning. How did you come up with your business name, Dream with Dan? Um, it kind of flowed from the website because I was looking for a good one, um, uh, a good name. Uh, because I, I got my name domain as well, DanielMangano.com, but um, it's a bit difficult to remember. So I was like, oh, okay, what can I do that people are going to remember? It's like Dream with Dan. It was available, so I, I took it, and then that became the business. Okay, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I was wondering, I was like, Dreamer Dan, are you, mm -hmm. is he a dreamer, a doer? Well, my company is Dreamer HQ, uh, my catchphrase is dream with your eyes open, I'm Dreamer CEO across all socials. The dream concept is deeply embedded because we're all about allowing people to live their dream life. Um, and so it's like when I could include it and it was easy to remember, like everyone can remember Dream with Dan. Nice, and then nine. Yeah. Since you're going on speaking engagements and et cetera, mm -hmm. if you could pick the place, mm -hmm. the time, mm -hmm. and the topic, mm -hmm. and money is limitless, where would you be speaking at? Oh, um, definitely like a big auditorium, like Madison Square Garden or something like that. They can get tens of thousands of people to speak about abundance. And I'd do it well, anytime. I'd be happy to do it anytime. Awesome. So Madison Square Garden, mm -hmm. topic abundance, mm -hmm. and anytime. Yeah. We just put that out there. So now, God, take root. Nice and time. then 10, bonus question. This is where you can ask me any question you want to know about me. Okay. What's your favorite vegetable? Favorite vegetable. Ooh, that's a good one. Mmm. I would probably say carrots because I can eat them cooked or raw. There you go. There's, you can always learn something about someone from their favorite vegetable. And what is that? Well, it depends. With your one, you even how you answered, you analyzed that there was a, there's the enjoyment, but also the practical element. So it shows that you're a balanced person. Ah, oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. See, I'm getting coached by another coach, y'all. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. And Dan, Sign us out once again by telling the listeners and the viewers who you are, how they could connect with you on social media, and your call to action for them to plug in with Dream with Dan. I'm Daniel Mangena, speaker and author, teaching you to know that abundance can be easy. Head over to dreamwithdan.com and grab one of the free resources. That's my call to action. Grab something that's going to support you living a more abundant life. And there you have it, listeners and viewers of Gems with Genesis on Mars Kemp. I just had the amazing Daniel Mangena here on the podcast, and we talked about the alchemy of abundance. So make sure you have your abundance and you manifest what you want, kick negativity to the curb, and stop playing it safe because you were never destined to play it safe. You weren't destined to live in a box and you are here because your life has purpose and the world needs you to show up and be yourself, authentic and unapologetically you. And until we chat next time, peace, love, and lots of blessings. You're a masterpiece and don't you ever forget it. <laughs>